Welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Lori Johnson. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking about ways to strengthen your immune system. My guest is Dr. Nicole Avina, scientist, speaker, and consultant on, on nutrition, including food addiction. She's an assistant professor of neuroscience at Mount Sinai School of Medicine and a professor at Princeton. She's the author of a number of great books, including Why Diets Fail and What to Eat If You Want to Get Pregnant. Dr. Avina, thanks for being here. Great to see you. Nice of you to join us today. Oh, thank you, Lori. I'm so happy to be here. So as we start navigating into the winter season, preventing cold and flu becomes top priority. And of course, this year, preventing COVID-19 jumps to the top of the list. So let's talk about some of the best preventative measures. What would you say is the most important? We're hearing a lot about different things that people can do to try to support their immune system. And I think that that's fabulous. We need to keep talking about ways that we can improve our health in general. And, you know, obviously there's the things that we're hearing a lot about, like making sure that we're washing our hands frequently, avoiding close contact with others, especially, you know, when we're in a situation where we're in a crowded place and maybe we, we're with strangers. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot that we can do in addition to those basics that we're hearing about with social distancing and hand washing. There's also things that we can do to really just take better care of yourself, making sure that we're getting a good diet, making sure that we're getting enough rest, making sure we're reducing anxiety. All of these things contribute to our immune health. And we really have to take a very holistic approach when trying to talk about this. So you're all about eating right. And uh, of course, there are lots of vitamins and nutrients in food. So do, does a person, if a person's eating right, do they actually need to take supplements as well? Again, you know, we really try to emphasize leading with food, meaning try to eat the rainbow, try to eat a variety of different foods so that you can make sure you're getting all the essential micronutrients that you need to support your immune system health. But part of the problem is some of the nutrients that are key for our immune system are actually quite difficult to get from food. A lot of foods don't necessarily contain them naturally, or if they do, they're in pretty small amounts, so they're not going to be quite as much as we need to maintain a healthy diet. So sometimes if your diet isn't really able to do all that it needs to do, a supplement can be recommended. And there's lots of different options that are out there. And I suggest people think about maybe supplementing for some of the key immune system functioning nutrients that are important for our immune health, like vitamin C, for example. Uh, Vitafusion makes a Power C gummy, so it's easy to take. And then also things like zinc and vitamin D, those are really hard to get from our diet. There's not too many foods that naturally contain vitamin D except maybe fish and other foods that are fortified with vitamin D. And so a supplement might be warranted in that case. And I like Frunutta, they make a sublingual version of these where you simply put it under your tongue and it dissolves easily. So you have a lot of options out there in terms of taking supplements if you find that you need one if your diet really isn't able to fill in all the gaps that are there. So regarding immune strength, you say definitely the vitamin C, the vitamin D, and the zinc. And I love how you point out that gummies are okay and the kind that dissolve in your mouth because so many people don't like to take supplements because they're sort of hard to swallow. And a lot of those supplements are kind of big too. So I'm Absolutely. glad to hear you that the, that the gummies are okay. Are there some gummies that are, are, are better than others and, and some of the other dissolvables that are better than others? Well, I think that, you know, it really comes down to a matter of choice. I say to people, hey, if it means that you're going to take it and adhere to taking it, that's the important thing, especially when we're looking to boost our immune health. And so having a supplement that you're going to readily take every day is very important, one that you're not going to find aversive. Nobody wants to swallow a big bulky pill. And so having these easier to take options, I think are really, really helpful. So aside from vitamins, let's talk about diet. This is sort of your expertise, and I see some fruits and vegetables in front of you right now. We hear so many things about different diets, and it's confusing the keto and the plant-based diet. And, and what type of diet, the Mediterranean diet, what do you recommend? Well, I mean, I really think it's a personal approach. I'm really an advocate for personalized nutrition. I don't think it's a good idea to tell somebody what to eat or what type of diet to follow because we all have our unique dietary preferences and things that we like. 
I know for me personally, I could follow a Mediterranean style diet because I like the types of foods that are on it, but I have plenty of friends who just don't really like those types of foods. So it's not always the case that it's a one size fits all approach. I would say that the biggest part of this is to make sure that we're minimizing processed foods, really trying to focus on eating fresh, wholesome foods and avoiding things that are overly processed. Because what ends up happening is that those are the foods that end up having lots of added sugars, added salt, and these other things that can have a negative impact not only on our overall health, but also on our immune system health. Well, a lot of people find that very surprising and also disturbing because, you know, in the winter and, you know, when we're stressed out, we love to eat our comfort food, and that usually contains a lot of sugar. And it's uh, surprising to a lot of people that sugar actually hampers the effectiveness of our immune system. Can you explain to us why that is? Yeah, so sugar has been shown to actually interfere with the white blood cells ability to do their job. And so our white blood cells are there to be able to fight off these infections that we might come into contact with so that we won't get sick. And so when we eat excess amounts of sugar, sugar is preventing that from happening. So you're essentially weakening your immune system when you eat a high sugar diet. So that's why it is so important to try to reduce added sugar in your diet. And you mentioned about you know snacking and people liking to indulge in different types of treats. I think that there are options out there that are available so that people don't necessarily have to have snacks that have added sugars in them. So obviously the best case would be having like fruits, maybe even you know hard boiled eggs or some vegetables. But if you're on the go and you want something that's maybe a little bit easier, there's options like crispy fruit snacks by Krispy Green. These are great because they're literally just 100% freeze dried fruit. There's no added sugar. And so you can really just take them on the go and have your snack. And it's kind of like replacing the chip with something that's actually a lot healthier. That's fantastic. So where can people get that particular brand? These are available on their website. If you go to crispygreen.com, you can see where they're located throughout the country. What's your opinion about fruit juice? So fruit juice is a no-no. I think that fruit is a wonderful addition to our diet. It contains lots of nutrients and fiber and things that we need to stay healthy. But what happens when we get into fruit juice is that Fruit juice is literally just the sugar that's in the fruit. We're stripping out all the nutrients. We're stripping out all the fiber. And so what ends up happening is you're losing all the benefit of the fruit by not eating the whole fruit and just having the juice. So it's recommended to avoid fruit juice. Actually, the American Academy of Pediatrics came out with a statement not too long ago recommending that children ages two and under have no fruit juice in their diet. You're better off making a fruit smoothie and enjoying that and getting the benefits of the fiber and the added nutrients. The fiber, all right. Well, you wrote a book called Why Diets Fail Because You Eat Too Much Sugar, which addresses sugar addiction. How many people are addicted to sugar and how does a person know whether they're addicted to sugar? That's a great question. So we don't really know how many people are struggling with sugar addiction because it's something that isn't necessarily out there in the medical community yet. We're starting to see that more and more doctors are adopting an approach of addiction when we talk about managing people who are struggling with overeating. Now, it used to be the case many years ago that you know people who were struggling with overeating and obesity, it was thought to be an issue of willpower and that they just lacked the self-control. But the research now suggests that people are, in fact, addicted to these foods, these foods that have high amounts of sugar in them. We're seeing changes in the brain that are similar when someone is overeating sugar to when someone is using drugs like you know, cocaine or even alcohol. And so in order to know whether or not you have a sugar addiction, there are different criteria that you can look at. And these are the criteria that would be utilized if you were trying to ascertain whether or not you had an addiction to something like drugs or alcohol. And I talk about them in the book, Why Diets Fail, but they're the things that, you know, you would ask yourself, like, do you engage in binging behavior? If you're, you know, abstaining or told to give up sugar, do you feel lethargic and irritable and cranky? Do you have cravings for sugar? Do you say you're not going to eat it and then you go and eat it anyway? And there's a lot of different other factors that play into it, but those are some of the key points to look out for if you think you might be struggling with it. 
Wow, I'm sure a lot of people were saying yes, yes, yes to those questions. This is a fascinating subject. We're going to take a quick break and be right back with Dr. Nicole Avina. The book is called Why Diets Fail. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to break a sugar addiction. Stay tuned. Want to be a part of a community that inspires your spiritual growth while winning prizes? The all-new MyCBN app. Connect with the community for prayer and encouragement. Track and set spiritual goals. Enjoy conversation starters with friends and family. And collect points to win prizes. The all-new MyCBN app. A great place to belong. Download the app at cbn.com slash mobile. Grow. Connect. Have fun. The all-new MyCBN app. On the home front. Thanks for joining us for CBN's On the Home Front, where we highlight what the men and women of America's military do to defend our country. CBN honors the men and women in our military with an initiative called Helping the Home Front. It partners with churches across the country to meet the needs of their military families, from repairing homes to wiping out medical bills for wounded veterans. Watch On the Home Front today at 2.30. Often we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. We're back now talking with Dr. Nicole Avina. The book is called Why Diets Fail. And you just talked about how a person can recognize the, when they have a sugar addiction. So here's the bigger question. How does a person break a sugar addiction? Yeah, that's really the million dollar question, right? Because I think, you know, recognizing that you have a problem with sugar and that you want to cut back is the first critical step. And a lot of people struggle to even get to that point. But what you do, the next question is, well, how do I get out of this? How do I break this vicious cycle? And so what I recommend is that instead of trying to go cold turkey and just try to cut all the sugar out of your diet, to take more of a harm reduction approach, really just focus on where are the biggest sources of sugar in your diet. And then starting one by one, try to not necessarily remove them, but replace them with healthier alternatives. Now, the reason I don't recommend going cold turkey is because we know from years and years of research on diet that when people go cold turkey, it doesn't work. And what we find is that it's overwhelming, not only from a physical standpoint, but from a psychological standpoint. It really sets people up for failure. And so starting by taking baby steps is going to be essential to helping to make habit changes. So first step might be if you drink a lot of fruit juice or sugar sweetened beverages to find another thing that you could drink instead. Maybe you're gonna drink coffee instead, or maybe you're gonna switch to club soda or seltzer water. Something that's still gonna allow you to enjoy the beverage, but it's not gonna have all the sugar in it and all of the detrimental effects to developing this habit that you're perpetuating by drinking it. And in addition to sugar, you say stress actually harms our immune function. Can you explain how that happens? Yeah, stress is a big issue, especially right now with everything that's happening in the world. I don't know anyone that isn't stressed out in some way, shape or form. And I think that we need to recognize that, you know, stress is something that acutely affects us, but it also can have a long term impact on our overall health and especially our immune system health. So when you're stressed and you're not coping with it correctly, your body is releasing cortisol. And this is a hormone that in your body over time can cause body fat accrual. So we can end up having fat deposits throughout our body if we're chronically stressed. And that's certainly not helpful. And it's going to add to these conditions like metabolic syndrome and potentially diabetes. When it comes to our immune health, 
Again, stress is detrimental to our immune system functioning because if our body is fighting a stressor or it thinks it's fighting a stressor because we're releasing cortisol, all of our energy and reserves in our body is going to go to fighting that stressor, not necessarily to fighting off bacteria and viruses and things that we're coming in contact with. So we're essentially taking away from the support of our immune system when we're stressed. So it's very important to manage stress and to figure out ways to mitigate it when possible. Well, you did correctly point out these are very stressful times. How can people relieve stress in the midst of a pandemic when people are struggling financially, worried about loved ones getting sick and so on? Yeah, I think it's such an important issue and we really need to be talking about this more, helping people to cope. This is an unprecedented time in our world. And I think we don't have a playbook for how to manage all the stressors that we're being faced with right now. I think the one thing that we can focus on is the thing that we can control. And I think part of the stress that's happening now is that people feel this sense of a loss of control, that they have no control over what's happening in terms of their health. They have no control over whether or not their children are ever gonna go back to school. They have no control over if their job is safe. And I think instead of focusing on and worrying about those things that we don't necessarily have control over, it's best to focus on the things we can control. And one of those things is actually our health. We can control our nutrition. We can control what we put in our bodies. We can control how often we take breaks and relax and enjoy ourselves and step away from the world for a few minutes here and there. And I really think that those are the little things that we need to be doing right now to help distract us from some of these larger looming things that are causing a lot of anxiety. Well, you talked earlier about foods that we shouldn't eat and which ones to avoid, but what about beverages like alcohol, for example? Yeah, so beverages are a tricky thing because, you know, a lot of times those are actually sneaky empty calories that get into our diet and they don't make us feel full. One of the things that's really tricky about beverages is that the caloric beverages can make us, you know, consume a lot of it in a small amount of time and you never feel satiated from it. So you end up wanting to drink more and more of it. And so there are a way that you can get passive calories in your diet that you might not want. And over time that can lead to an increase in body weight. But in terms of specific beverages, I think, you know, if you're struggling with anxiety, especially, you might want to think about cutting back on caffeinated beverages. Coffees and some teas can have a high amount of caffeine in them. And the same with some of these energy drinks that are available on the market. Over time, if you're utilizing a lot of caffeine, that can have a negative impact on how you feel. And it can also mess with your sleep and it can alter your mood and it can really just not be necessarily the best thing for people who are struggling with anxiety and stress right now. So I focus on water. I, I really always come back to that. I think that's the healthiest beverage we can drink. And if you find that it's boring and you want some flavor to it, you can buy all kinds of different flavored waters these days. Um, there's also flavorings you can add yourself and you can really customize it to make it be the way that you want it to be. This is fascinating information. We're going to take another quick break and be right back with Dr. Nicole Avina. We're going to be talking about the importance of a good night's sleep and how to get one. Stay with us. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. I liked your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible. All in one place. The CBN Bible, available at cbn.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news, exclusive stories and programs, credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN Newswatch because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Superbook fans, here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a 
fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy to understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta da! Whoa! <laughs> no super falls, man. Come and. Uh, sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. We're back talking about immune function with Dr. Nicole Avina. Dr. Avina, how important is sleep to strengthening our immune system? Sleep is essential for strengthening our immune system. And a lot of times it's the thing that we're sacrificing, especially these days where people are stressed and maybe not sleeping quite as easily as they have in the past. But it is essential that we get proper sleep to allow our immune system to restore itself and to be able to function correctly. It's not unlike what happens when people are chronically stressed. If you're chronically sleep deprived, even by missing out on an hour or two each night, what ends up happening is that your body has to use its reserves and its resources to compensate for that lack of sleep. And that energy gets taken away from the immune system. And so you're essentially taking away from the ability of your immune system to function at its best when you're not allowing your body to get proper rest and sleep at night. Can you offer some tips about how to get enough sleep? A lot of people have difficulty falling asleep or they wake up in the middle of the night and can't get back to sleep. Yeah, so I think that Couple things that I really recommend people do. One is to stay away from your smartphone and do not bring your phone into your bedroom. The phone should live in another room at night. Part of the reason for that is that people tend to get into this habit of scrolling through their phone or looking at that blue screen right before they go to sleep, thinking it's gonna help them relax. But in the end, what it ends up doing is causing our circadian hormones to be set off rhythm. And so that light that's emitted from the phone actually is detrimental to helping you to fall asleep. It's harming your ability to fall asleep. So you wanna to try to minimize exposure to a phone or to a tablet or a screen before you go to bed. Also, I think it's important to think about your sleep environment. A lot of times people find that they're unable to fall asleep because there's something in the environment that is just making it difficult for them. So make sure that your room is as dark as possible. Make sure that you have nice comfy sheets. Make sure that it's a, a good temperature for you. And also, you know, think about maybe trying a weighted blanket. I've actually started using one of those myself and it's done wonders for my sleep. There's something about it just, you know, keeping you nice and warm and having that weight on you that, you know, really makes sleeping a little bit easier. And uh, also, what about uh, having, uh, not doing anything else in your bed, like working, uh, because it, it trains your brain to stay awake when you're in bed? Absolutely, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, because the bedroom should be a place for rest. And so making sure that you're not working in your bedroom if possible um, is really essential. You wanna make sure that when you lay down in that bed that your body becomes to develop the habit that I'm laying down to go to sleep. If you get into the habit of you know, doing work or holding meetings in your room, then that really can be difficult in terms of helping your body to be able to associate what it's supposed to do when you lay down in your bed. We train our brain with all these different habits. Okay, we're gonna take another break and be right back with Dr. Nicole Avina. The book is called Why Diets Fail. Stay tuned. Come home to the sounds of Southern Gospel from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern gospel favorites like the Gaithers, the Crab Family, and bluegrass sounds like Mountain Faith. So make yourself at home with the all-new CBN Southern Gospel, now available at CBNRadio.com. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead, just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown, Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Life. 
It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. We're back with Dr. Nicole Avina talking about how to strengthen your immune system. It's never been more important than now. Dr. Avina, this has been so helpful. So tell us, how can people learn more about you and get your books, like Why Diets Fail and What to Eat When You're Trying to Get Pregnant? Yeah, so if you go to my website, drnicoleavina.com, there's links to all the books there. You can also find all of my books on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, all the regular places where you typically would buy books. And on my website, there's also lots of information about different health-related topics like we're talking about today and also about sugar and food addiction. Um, you can also follow me on social media at Dr. Nicole Avina. Well, it's pretty interesting uh, that you wrote an entire book on what to eat when you're trying to get pregnant. Is this an issue for so many people who, who want to have a baby and, are, and have difficulty getting pregnant? Yeah, so What to Eat When You Want to Get Pregnant is my new book that will actually be out in March of 2021. It's available for pre-order now. And I wrote the book because it is a serious issue. A lot of people who are delaying the time at which they're having a baby, waiting until later life, they're struggling to get pregnant. And so I wanted to provide some resources about things that you can do to help make sure your body is the best that it could be when you do get to the point where you are trying to have a baby. And nutrition can have a big role, not only for women, but also for the men too. Very interesting. And then you also wrote a book about what to feed your baby and toddler, right? Yes, yeah, so What to Feed Your Baby and Toddler is my book that I wrote again because I have a passion for really just getting information to parents and to families to help make better decisions about their health. And so What to Feed Your Baby and Toddler is available now, and it is really just a handbook for new parents who are trying to navigate the ins and outs of feeding your baby from ages six months through age two. It has lots of delicious recipes and a lot of information just answering all those questions people have about what nutrients are important for their baby to have and where they can get them. Well, this is such amazing information. Dr. Nicole Avina, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate your time and your advice. It's so good to see you. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. All right, take care now. And our thanks to you for tuning in to this edition of Healthy Living. I'm Lori Johnson. To watch other Healthy Living programs, go to CBNNews.com and click on the Shows link and scroll down to Healthy Living. Until next time, God bless you and hope to see you again. Bye now.